On September 1st, 1913, the San Luis Central opened for business, and it's never stopped making money. But don't judge its potential to stay in the black by the state of the charming Depression-era feel of its headquarters in Monta Vista, Colorado. Ironically, the railroad was built to serve a three-year-old sugar beet factory in Center, Colorado, but the factory closed down the first year the railroad was built. So how does a short line between two rural towns with 16 miles of track survive? First, they don't spend money if they can do it themselves. Evidence of this mindset lays around the facility like a living museum. The railroad has only owned three locomotives in 110 years. Baldwin built number one was retired in 1955 when they bought a brand new GE 70 tonner, which is kept as backup power. The workhorse now is number 70, a 1952 built SW8, bought used in 1988. Averaging around nine employees, all work is done in-house. Rail and tie replacement, track and equipment maintenance is done when tonnage doesn't need to be moved. It was clear to me that this team mentality has fostered a fierce loyalty to the line. They take pride in every aspect of this little railroad that could. The first couple of miles consist of a small interchange yard and a couple of customers. Heading north, the line slices through the lush Rio Grande River bottom. Once drier land is reached, a new pattern begins. The land in this part of the valley is broken up into one square mile plots. Soon there's a customer every mile, as the railroad hauls a lot of wheat these days. The first six miles have been relayed with 90-pound rail. The last six are still 1913 original 55-pound rail. The second thing that keeps SLC wheels turning is customer service. Thomas Tankula is the general manager of the road these days. A rail fan himself, he was very generous with my girlfriend and I. We both really appreciated his enthusiasm and goodwill. Thomas is busy growing revenue sources for the road. There are new customers in the grain business, and he is trying hard to earn back lost customers who switched over to trucking. A big revenue source that had been bled away over the years are potatoes. Able to be stored for most of the year, potatoes represent the ability to make money during the times when grain isn't being hauled. In the past, the SLC had a decent-sized fleet of ex-Railway Express Agency refrigerator cars that traveled the lower 48. There are more than a few still on property. Recently, Thomas has purchased used Amtrak Express reefers for cheap. Each one needs to be overhauled to be placed into service. As of now, there is one customer that ships potatoes to its warehouse in Houston, Texas. Hopefully, with better service and home road rolling stock, the SLC will gain back traffic from the trucking lines. Thomas let us tag along on a quick trip that highlighted his commitment to customer satisfaction. The SW8 was to run up six miles to pull loaded grain hoppers so the customer could continue loading cars. Well, that is about, that's about as smooth as you get. Conductor and brakeman consisted of Carlos Lopez and Fred Cisneros. All were happy to have us along and enjoyed talking about life on this bucolic railroad.
overjoyed to get the chance to catch a ride on this cool little railroad that has battled through thick and thin to survive to this day. You are more than welcome to stop by and catch some action. Just remember to ask permission and be respectful, and you just might be able to enjoy a ride. I want to thank Thomas, Chris, Carlos, and Fred for providing me with this opportunity. And I wish you the best of luck and skill to see this railroad continue on into the future. Thank you.